I think next we will go to uh, Dr. Aditi Bhargava. Uh, Dr. Bhargava is a professor in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the Center for Reproductive Sciences at University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Bhargava. Thank you, for, thank you for the invitation. My name is Aditi Bhargava. I'm a professor at UCSF and a molecular biologist with 33 years of research experience. These are my scientific views. COVID-19 vaccines are often compared to polio vaccines. This is apples to orange comparison because RNA and DNA viruses are fundamentally different. DNA viruses mutate at a very slow rate DNA viruses induce lifelong immunity. After a natural infection with DNA viruses such as the polio or chickenpox, no one needs to be vaccinated or develops the disease in their lifetime. In contrast, RNA viruses mutate frequently and do not induce lifelong immunity as we have seen with SARS-CoV-2 or flu viruses. One can have influenza multiple times in their lives, vaccines or no vaccines. Flu has not been eradicated, nor is there any talk to eradicate it. There is no herd immunity for flu. It is simply not an achievable goal. Safety issues with vaccines happen despite best of intentions. There are no drugs without side effects. For example, measles and rotavirus vaccines have been recalled due to safety concerns despite stringent clinical trials and years of data. Unlike other drug trials, vaccine trials are different as they are tested on a largely healthy population to prevent infection. Next slide, please. Good vaccines are modeled to mimic natural infection and rely on one's own immune system to produce antibodies and provide protection. Natural immunity is the gold standard. CDC estimates that nearly 43% of the country is already infected with SARS-CoV-2 and thus naturally immune. And that was all before the more transmissible Delta variant took hold. Living in a bubble or sterile conditions is counterproductive to everything we know about strengthening the immune system. It's Immunology 101. To downplay the beneficial and protective powers of our immune system goes against the founding principles of immunology. Several studies about SARS-CoV-2 are validating that knowledge. There is no documented case of a naturally immune person getting reinfected with severe disease or hospitalization, despite the first case reported nearly two years ago. In sharp contrast, there are thousands of cases of severe COVID hospitalization and deaths in fully vaccinated people. CDC now estimates 90% of the Americans over the age of 16 have antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. But vaccine-induced antibodies are only a small fraction of immune responses. New studies from the British Health Ministry suggest that COVID vaccines might interfere with the ability of our immune system to produce antibodies against other parts of the virus, crucial aspect for developing cross-protection. The spike antibodies are incomplete and cherry-picked stories. Vaccine-induced protection fell to 33 to 42% within three months. That is no different than the protection the unvaccinated have. Hence, mandates to prevent spread by using spike antibody levels as gold standard is gross misrepresentation of data. Next slide, please. It should not have taken the Massachusetts breakthrough infection in the summer to discover that fully vaccinated people are just as vulnerable to being infected and transmit SARS-CoV-2 as the unvaccinated. Had the trials been stringent, had the phase two and three stuck to the protocols of follow-ups, had the regulators enforced manufacturers to study prevention of infection in their clinical trials, this fiasco could have been avoided. Instead, manufacturers configured these trials to study the prevention of mild symptoms and use preclinical models such as the rhesus monkeys in whom the virus does not cause disease. If all we can do is to prevent symptoms and severe disease, we should be talking about drugs to treat COVID, not vaccines and mandates. We lost the opportunity of discovering these major shortcomings by torpedoing the clinical trials when placebo groups were eliminated just two months after the second dose. Instead, we are learning through trials on, and errors on hundreds of millions of people. 
and we insist on eliminating a very important control group by these vaccine mandates. There is no scientific study or experimental design in which we can learn anything of value without a control group, certainly not about safety and efficacy. Persistent high levels of antibodies often indicate pathology to the body's immune system. That is the basis of autoimmune disease. Hence, boosters' long-term adverse events should be weighed seriously. The notion that we are in an emergency nearly two years after the pandemic and that should justify cutting corners or taking shortcuts is simply wrong. Trust in scientific methods is at stake. Next slide, please. Media reports often state that science is clear, but scientific publications do not claim that the science is clear. And as you've heard from various testimonies, <clears throat> real people suffered serious adverse events and perhaps lifelong disabilities due to sloppy trials. I will conclude by asking you, if the vaccines don't prevent infection and transmission, surely mandating person A to protect person B is pointless. But if the vaccines are effective in preventing infection, transmission, decreased symptoms, hospitalization rates, and death, then what do the vaccinated fear? Thank you.